Are you ready? It's time to create. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me. Um, so we're going to work on wreaths and we've got some inspiration. Maybe you have clover from your grass outside or anything you can find. Um, or just look up pictures online from another screen, I guess, of plants and flowers that you like. Now we're going to be doing a warm up exercise. Something I really love to do as a warm up is a blind contour drawing. The um, drawing you're watching is two times as fast as the drawing that I did. So take your time with this. One way to think of a blind contour is you're not looking at the page that you're drawing on. You're only looking at the object you're drawing. In this case, our plant materials. And you can imagine you're like a little tiny ant crawling along the side edge and you follow the line that that ant would crawl on. I've I'm moving to the um, fern now and you see the little hairs all sticking off and um, so you're gonna just really let your eye notice and let your hand get connected to your eyes so you're drawing what you're seeing you're not thinking of what shape this should be you're just letting your eyes notice and see the detail and let your hands just follow and observe and admire the differences, the contrasting shapes, the curves, the type of imperfect little um, fluid organic shapes in your inspiration piece. And so what you're ending up with here doesn't matter what it looks like. You're just getting your um, getting yourself warmed up and connected. And then you can do a little just you know, mess around with your paintbrush, get a feel for it. Use this nice round brush as a great brush for painting. Um, and doing brush drawing, you can use that little tip to almost use it like a stamp to get leaf shapes and petal shapes. And then once you have wetness on the page, you can go back while it's still wet and drop in a little bit of darker colors here and there if you need to. You can hold that tip really to just get the point for some small exact parts. Um, so here I'm kind of adding a little darker paint in and where it's wet, it'll There's just bleed. You can do it. I know it's tempting when you hear wreath to think circle and to get nervous and want a perfect circle. And um, some people like to do it like this. My daughter um, traced a circle to kind of give her guidance to keep hers um, like that. However, I want to encourage you to be willing to let it be whimsical and organic and imperfect and not trace a circle, but just... Um, kind of lay your plant ideas out um, now that you've done your sketching and your warm-ups to kind of get the feel of the shapes and the type of design that this um, plants that you want to use for your wreath have. Um, just kind of lay them out, bend them, move them around until you get kind of a design in your mind. You might just have one flower and you repeat it different times, but kind of um, it's, you get a nice organic style if you're willing to be um, imperfect. Uh, here's my finished product that I'll walk you through. So I'm asymmetrical, a little wonky, not quite an oval, definitely not a circle. If you um, look in places and watch as the video goes along, you can tell that I kind of had little oopses here and there and then just, you know, just keep going. Because if you can't enjoy it, and just let the mistakes roll off your back, then why do it at all? Um, do it with love or don't do it. That's what I say, um, down with perfectionism. If we wanted something perfect, we would just do it on the computer and hit print um, or buy it from a factory machine made, but we're doing this by hand. So enjoy and um, appreciate those little wiggles and um, kind of things that make it obvious that it was made by hand. That's the human touch and it's something to have kindness towards and appreciation for. So I encourage you to do that and i um, really glad you all joined me. Thanks. Here is my pile of inspiration and my blank page. So this video is sped up. Um, so you'll notice I'm moving 
maybe quicker than you might move and that's 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 fake because I sped the video up. It'd be too long otherwise. And I'm sorry that my hand is blocking the painting, but I want you to notice I've picked up a very thin brush. It's either a, called a line brush or a script brush, and maybe size zero or size one. And that's great for doing those thin lines. You can use the round brush if you hold it very carefully to just get the tip on, but it, sometimes it's hard to keep it evenly very thin. So I'm using the script or line brush and I'm going in to get all the little bitty tiny details of this curly willow. That is the plant that I'm holding. Um, and it's got such nice kind of undulating curved leaves and irregular curvy um, stem. And so um, if you'll notice, and now I'm moving into the cherry blossom. Well, it's actually not a cherry blossom branch, it's a peach tree. Um, so we've got the darker brown and I'm using my pinky finger to stabilize my hand as I'm doing these kind of small detail type things. And I've planned out where I'm going to come back in with my pink blossom. So I left that space open and I'm moving to my round brush. This is either a size six or eight and using it like a stamp. Notice how I turn the brush to be at different angles. You need to keep, um, imagine the brush like a train and the you need to have the brush as the caboose of the train. It needs to point in the direction you're going when you're doing a line and use it like a stamp when you're doing petals. Now I've gone back with my thin brush and if you want those little stamen that are thin lines to stay very thin, you should wait till the underlayer dries. However, I don't mind to get a little bit of bleeding or in watercolor, it's called a bloom, when you touch paint onto wet paint and it kind of spreads a little bit. And I was okay to have a little bit of that and I could tell which parts um, might do that and I didn't mind, so I went for it. And then I was getting the little stamen on one that had no petals, just the kind of little crazy hairs, and I love that kind of thing. So turning my brush so that my line um, doesn't get too wide. If you if you drag one of those script brushes to the side for your line, it's going to be a wide line. If you angle your brush in the direction you're going, it'll be a thin line. If you kind of experiment on your scratch paper, you'll get a feel for what I'm talking about. And I'm going back in with some yellow to add the very tip ends of that. I'm getting some of those little details, adding in a few little other shades of color to bleed in some little reds and oranges to just let it kind of blur while there's still some wetness on that under layer. Now I get some green paint. And these are some genuine stone paints from Daniel Smith that I just really love, but any watercolors will do. So you notice how I'm turning my brush to get that angle to use it like a, almost like a stamp to press down and then drag to get the leaf shape of those little new leaves that are coming out. I'm kind of getting one shade of green and then I'll get another shade of green and let if you'll notice there there's a slight variety of the different shades of green on there and that's nice to pick up on those varieties in your painting so i'm alternating between the two different ones and letting letting them kind of mix on my brush and mix on the page now if i did as many leaves as there are on the branch it might feel overly crowded so i'm kind of using it as inspiration but feeling free to to um, choose the design myself and just take what I like and what works and then kind of bend and change it as I need to to work within the design I'm doing. Like I said, this is my first uh, video recording of painting with this stand and so I'm still learning how to do it without blocking the view. So I'm holding over some other things to try to kind of imagine what they would look like and try to work out how I want the design to look and just kind of, that's the nice thing about having actual plants next to you. You can kind of do that, just hold them up to kind of get a visual for it. So what I'm landing on is this iris 
The person who shared the plant with me called it roof iris. I'm not sure if that's the technical name. I looked it up before. I think it might be like a butterfly iris. But I used a little bit of my purple that's genuine amethyst purple by Daniel Smith. And it is amethyst all crushed up, that dark purple. But it was a little overly dark. So I'm going to use some other purples to try to get it close enough. That would, it's hard to get an exactly perfect match. But you just... Just have fun with it. So where I drew my stem from my peach blossom earlier is kind of, it's not my favorite place when it comes to putting this bloom, but I'm just gonna paint right over it and just keep going. And I think it's not gonna matter too much in the end. So just kind of filling in, working those edges. Adding, mixing some of that um, quinacridone rose is the pink or pink quinacridone pink with a, I think a cerulean blue, and that makes a nice shade of purple. You can get some of the little dots just using a real thin round brush. I think that's a black velvet silver is the brand of this brush I'm using, and I think that's a size six in my hand that's the smaller. So you're getting some of that little splashy, dotty, stripey texture in there that's so nice. It's one thing that's nice about painting plants and flowers is you really do get to know them so much better than you would if you just look at them, you kind of get an intimate friendship with them almost, you become a lot more familiar as you take the time to, to capture them with paper, on paper. So I've got another script brush or liner brush that's nice and thin. The work that I did as a warm-up comes in handy as I'm more familiar with the way this shape, this the way the structure of this plant is made after I've kind of done my warm-up. I can get that lovely little teardrop bud with a twisty, twirly, purpley top. It's just so, so neat. mixed up a purple that looks like a, just the purple kind of bluish bright bluish purple so I went back and added some of that in and now I'm trying to figure out where can I put this fiddlehead because I love fiddlehead ferns this is an autumn fern fiddlehead that pokes up in the spring and then they have another little flush of growth in the fall so I'm skipping over the green uh, that I painted underneath and adding this as though it's coming up behind it. So I'm just adding in a little more of the kind of orangey red brown. I'm trying to get those little blobby textures in the center of that spiral all the little fern frauds that will unfurl as it gets taller and then you gotta get the hairs all those little scraggly scruffy hairs on the fiddlehead fern it's such a great detail and i'm using the script brush for that 